Hi guys, this is Cecil Eskenazi from Via Journey. Um, today is June 2nd and it's the third and last day of Augmented World Expo 2017 in Santa Clara. I'm in sunny, sunny, sunny Santa Clara at the Santa Clara Convention Center. So um, it's 10 a.m. And the expo hall has just opened, or hopefully, because yesterday they opened a bit late. So I'm going to take you through the expo hall, and we're going to have a look at the cool demos and see, um, you know, what type of booths there are and the companies that are exhibiting here at Augmented World Expo, both in the fields of augmented reality and virtual reality. Uh, so let's have a look. And here we are, Robert Scobo. Hey Robert, how are you? Good, you on Facebook on? Live? Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you later. See you. Hey, hey, you how are you? Soon. You good? Nice to see you again. So of course all the key players are here. There's so much going on, so let's get in. But right now, just make sure they have the bag. All right, so the first thing to note is that there is a massive Microsoft booth at the entrance, and they also have a massive line. So people are waiting in line to try some Microsoft experiences. They want to try the HoloLens, and there's actually a weird, weird experience in there. That looks like a hospital. We'll, we'll have a look later on. Uh, but I think somebody yesterday was remarking that it hasn't been a while since Microsoft had lines at their booths. I don't know about that. But they are certainly one of the hot companies in the field of AR, and particularly mixed reality. And yesterday they won an Augie Award for the best head-worn head -worn display. So well done, Microsoft. Then we have a big big booth here for Dacry. Dacry, they do smart helmets to be used in the industry where workers have information overlaid onto their field of view um, to perform their work and it's more in an industry environment. So continuing our tour is a massive expo so you'll have to bear with me as I go back and forth the different the different aisles and booths. So we have ODG. ODG, they do smart glasses. Uh, they presented their R8 smart glasses on stage uh, a couple of days ago. I think I've tried them on, not here, but at a different show. And what is really exciting about those is that you can do all, um, augmented reality as well as virtual reality. So the glasses can be see-through or they can become opaque depending on the use case, so if you want to block out the external world or not. I can show you what the headsets look like, actually. Uh, got a guy trying them on? Yeah. They have one of the most popular booths. See one of the one of the glasses. Then I walk back this way. So again, that green. And there's a company called Copin, and I have to say I don't really know what they do. Apparently, they have wearables for AR and VR. Um, but I haven't come across those guys before. It's probably something I need to change, so I will go have a look later and chat with them to understand what they're doing. But they're a big sponsor, so they probably had a large amount of money to spend on these booths, so they probably 
one of the players to watch out. Uh, Intel has a big booth over here with Project Alloy. Project Alloy is what they call merge reality. So it's a virtual reality headset. It's actually a reference design. I don't think that's something they want to commercialize. But it's something that they've shown and I think they want to inspire other companies to build it. So what they call merge reality is a VR headset with a camera that's filming the outside world so that you're not completely blocked from what's going on outside and it can allow some kind of interesting, what I would call mixed reality use cases. So there's a line as well to try it. I'll see if later the line gets smaller. There's a line at a lot of the booths here, which is a bit disappointing. It's been really crowded yesterday. And the first day there was no expo, it was only the talk. So there's really been just a couple of days and even today finishes at three o'clock. So a lot of things to see in a very um, short amount of time. It's been a bit tough. Now we're on the other side of the Microsoft booth. I want to show you what's the thing that people are queuing for. And it's a bit, it's a bit weird, I think. So you have like what looks like a corpse in a medical room and people are walking around with their HoloLens. I have no clue what they're seeing, but I don't really like seeing that corpse, that body. It's a fake body, by the way. It's a mannequin, but still in there. So I'll see if I can find some news about what people have seen exactly. I'm not going to queue for that one because I've tried the HoloLens a bunch of times. So I don't want to spend like an hour and a half in line for this one. But I'd be curious to know what, what they actually show. All right, so what's up next? Okay, here it's um, Vuforia. So Vuforia was on stage on the keynote on the first day and they presented something that is called Project Chalk. Project Chalk is a um, communication technology allowing um, remote troubleshooting, so allowing somebody remote guiding a technician in the field uh, that needs to perform attacks and guiding them by showing them something on their field of view so they're able to circle something that they're looking at. Uh, so it's pretty cool, but it's not really new. There's a bunch of other companies doing the same thing already, like Scope AR, which we go see later. So it's cool because it's Euphoria, they're big, they're well known, but it's not like what I would call breakthrough innovation. Still interesting player, Euphoria, for, the, for AR. Um, so now we're going to go down one aisle, I have to choose. Oh, we have Zappar. Zappar, they made an announcement yesterday and they had a massive line here. Because um, they launched a mixed reality headset on the chip level, kind of a cardboard, where they stick on a chip camera and it turns into a mixed reality device. and they're uh, they had a Kickstarter project and I think they sold it for $30 for the Kickstarter backers and they are selling it on the show for $50 and I'm not sure what the um, price would be when it comes out but it sounds like a pretty good deal for a mixed reality headset compared to a $3,000 HoloLens but of course it's nothing like the same quality. I'm still to try it out so you know to compare it's, it's probably going to be more for consumers um, and you know the tagline is it's magically meets Google Cardboard or it's something that they quote from um, Slash Gear you can see on the wall there uh, but you know I'm all for democratizing technologies um, I'm all for mass market adoption that's what Via Journey is all about so maybe Zappar is one of the players that to make it happen I'm going to be very happy with that so I will I will need to look into them a bit more they also won an Ogie Award prize last night. Now what else? Here there's some kind of art installation. And I think it might be the other side of Project Alloy, I think. So I would imagine that the art installation comes to life through the device, but I haven't tried it. You can see there's a weird headset, it's standalone, it's not tethered. There's a big box at the back, so probably for the computer and maybe the battery. It's 
so let's move on. Here we have Scopear. Scopear is a company I discovered when I worked at Ericsson, and they have solution to create smart instructions over augmented reality, so to build like a tutorial, step-by-step -step guide in 3D that will overlay onto your field of view, either using a tablet or using AR glasses or even a HoloLens. Um, and they also have a um, live streaming solution for remote troubleshooting, uh, similar to what um, Euphoria has with their chalk, their neutral solution. So Scopia has been in the field for a long while. And yesterday I tried a demo. They are showing a drone. And you can put on the HoloLens. And when you look at the drone with the HoloLens, it overlays a 3D model of the drone. And then it's uh, focusing on different parts. And so you can see you know, what the camera looks like or what the propellers look like. And it's a pretty neat little demo. Scopia, not very well known for consumers, they're more for the enterprise side of things. By the way, this show is really enterprise focused. There's a lot for the industry or businesses. Uh, there is a lot less for consumers and a lot less fun stuff, I would say, in my humble opinion, compared to, uh, for example, SVVR, which I attended a couple of months ago, which was slightly smaller, but for me more engaging because there was less lines, less queue to try the experiences and more consumer stuff. But still, Augmented World Expo is a major show and I used to work on you know, VR for Enterprise and I also spoke in a panel yesterday in a panel discussion about VR for Enterprise so it's also something I care about. Uh, here we have Bosch and they have a car on their booth which is always something fun to see. No lines though so they're not probably as exciting as some of the other players. Um, Let's go this way. Um, this side we have Atir. Atir, they have smart glasses as well for the enterprise. Let me show you. see very well because of the light under the, the mannequin. Oh, there we are. So that was a tear. All right, and it says my connection is weak, so I know it's been an issue on the show. I hope it's not breaking up too much. I might try and slow down my pace when I talk so you don't miss out. Hey Brian. Way go. That looks like a game. Toy Brick Smith mobile apps. You can get a sense of the scale of the show. So the entrance is over there where we started, and there's still a lot more over here. Um, more startups, less big sponsors with big booths. Over here we have the guys at Wikitude and they won a prize yesterday. 
they came on stage. Um, that's their CEO actually, who came on stage. This one that I really like, they're called Flipside. I haven't had a video actually showing what they do. They have a VR, they have a studio in VR to create your shows, your kind of TV shows. So you can become a TV host and look like a monster like this. Uh, I tried it, it's pretty cool. So I'll have to see if I can uh, use that for some of my videos on a VR journey. Cognitive VR, they're all about analytics for virtual reality. And VR Vanna. Somebody told me I need to check them out, so I will. Now we have a startup I checked out yesterday, it's called Altar. They have a product called Altar Show. And it's a communication tool in VR where people can collaborate and communicate in a shared environment in virtual reality. But what is different about them is that they also use um, mechanisms to help people remember things. So they believe in the um, the way that people learn uh, when they attach memories or names or stuff they need to remember to locations and to places, to physical places. So in VR, you can do some of that and uh, they have techniques that, to help people remember stuff. You can see spatial memory written on that TV um, allocation, no, allocentric, egocentric. <laughs> So they're, they're pretty cool. Altar. Um, and then we have a whole bunch of startups over there at the back. There's an area for speed networking kind of thing. And then I want to go back to One Isle on the other side because I think we missed one interesting bit. Uh, it's hard to cover everything but I hope this is giving you an idea of what Augmented World Expo is about. If you're interested to learn more, if you're thinking whether you should go next year, apparently it's grown a lot since past year so I expect that next year will be a lot bigger. Still, to me it's big enough but you know, the technology is getting more and more popular. It's an interesting feel. Oh yes, one thing I missed, I'm going to show you. There's a big long line here to go see Meta. So Meta, they have an um, augmented reality or mixed reality headset. It's kind of a, a bit like a HoloLens uh, with their own different technology. They say they reimagine user interface. And um, I was lucky enough to try it at SVVR where we didn't have to wait in line. We could book an appointment which was pretty cool, but it was in a closed room. They made it look really secretive at the time, and now we can see them. So you can see the headset right there. Meta with a big line. They also won an award last night. There was like 10 companies winning awards, plus a bunch of special awards. So, you know, many, many of the expected players came on stage.
Right, so I'm crossing, we're back where we were a few minutes ago and I want to show the last aisle. There's one company with a French founder that I want to show you. Um, there we are, Z. So they call Stereo Labs. And uh, their founder and CEO is called Cécile, she's over there. Uh, and they have a depth camera for mixed reality. So they have a demo where they strap the camera onto a headset, onto a rift, and turn a rift into a mixed reality headset, basically. Yes, okay. it's about the same. So um, it can provide your positional data from inside out tracking, which works. Um, so someone is playing the game and they're actually playing with the real environment.